We're live. Yeah. Hey, happy Easter, everybody out there that's watching um, our York History Group second gab session we've had uh, in the last couple of weeks. Um, I am going to go over a few of the do's and don'ts that I usually do. Same old stuff. Um, Elaine is going to jump in. She's a moderator and she's going to tell us what she's doing. Um, Kevin's got something he wants to read and we're going to talk about. Um, the usual uh, people send me pictures. I get a lot of pictures. Thank you very, very much. Do not think that they're going into a bottomless abyss or something like that. I am saving them. I am following up on it. I am going to put them up. I try and get a little backstory with a picture to bring it into the into the history conversation. Um, so please, you know, keep sending them or whatever. And Elaine's going to tell you about how we're saving them. Uh, negative comments. I deleted one this week. Um, I might have others um, here. But, uh, we won't. No denigrating anybody and whether where they're from or whatever. I understand. We don't care. People that are following us, we've grown fantastically. Um, Forty percent of the tax base of the town of York is summer people, and we enjoy them. Um, I was a summer kid for a long time. We don't care if you've been in town four hundred years or four months. If you have a genuine interest in the history of the town and learning stuff, um, we're, we're all about that. We're not a discussion group to talk about town problems. Sometimes we get carried off a little bit and we I've noticed a couple of times and I said, I probably shouldn't have said that, but you know, uh, I'm sorry and I will. This is a learning experience at the York History Group. Uh, we learn something every day, I mean, uh, we had a member tell me the formulation of SciCAD ad the other day, and I said, wow, that, you know, I, I, I didn't know that, and I should have known that. We used to drink beer out there when we were in high school, but um, two guys that I knew, Alma Young and Cad Trafton, I mean, I didn't know them very well. I was a kid, and they were old men, but boy, it's made so much sense, and, and so we're learning all the time. Um, <laughs> there's a survey out we'd like everybody to sort of fill in what you like to hear about we know everybody likes the pictures that is tangible history that you know you can associate a person walking through town with a picture of somebody on a covered wagon 115 years ago so um, we like that colonial history is a more conversational history and and but this group is all about any of that, so it makes it makes no matter. Um, people offered to help get involved. We know we are going to need help um, as we're growing so fast, and we're getting older. And we're hoping that this group is going to last for a long time, generations to come, or at least the information is going to last for generations to come. So we're not, no, we're gonna need more help. And, uh, and uh, just keep, keep picking away at us and, uh, and we're gonna try. I'm gonna turn it over to Kevin. I'm sure I will bounce back in and forth and Elaine and uh, they can talk about what they've been up to. Thank you. All right. Um, hi everybody, happy Easter. Um, I just kind of want to pick up where Kevin left off on a couple of things uh, where he finished. Um, and that was the survey that we did. And um, I don't know if you've seen the, uh, the survey, um, but you can add your own topics to that just so you know. So like if you have something that you think that you would prefer to see that you're not seeing or whatever, you can just add that as one of the topics below the, the, the topics that we did. Um, and it's interesting. So you probably people that have looked at the survey right now, currently there are 28 votes for people that like to see buildings and the schools, which is pretty high. And the second one is uh, 
the second one is they like people like York History Group just the way it is. I mean, that's that's pretty cool. Um, so, um, so I just wanted to let everybody know that. And also, I, a constant reminder to go over to our YouTube channel. Um, I, we put up a new video the other day over there. And before Elaine gets started with um, with um, how we're sorting and saving all of the data, I just wanted to uh, I, I wanted to do a little bit of actual history. And I mentioned this book the last time that we went live. It's called uh, Ralph Lowe's, a native published 1982 by Wait, Memories of York, Maine, 80 Years Ago and Later. And after I read this book, I was just kind of like really enthralled by the whole thing and uh, his insight into a particular time in York's history. Um, you know, maybe you guys can help me when uh, Ralph was born. 1858 or something. Yeah, 1858, okay. So this there's an entry in here where he was a kid and he was um, going to class at the old jail. And I just found it really fascinating. And he also, I'll just read, I'm gonna read a couple of paragraphs here. There, this will be quick, but this insight to what the old jail was used for after it was the prison is just so revealing. He writes, I have, I have always felt a deep sense of gratitude to Mrs. to Mr. G.W.S. Putnam for his kindness to me. He gave me my first Sunday school class a lively girl several years younger than I was. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna go back. Oh, I'm gonna jump ahead just a little bit, <laughs> sorry. Um, when I first began to go to school, I attended the primary grade in the old jail, which is now a museum on Jail Hill. This was because the old red schoolhouse back of the townhouse was too crowded to hold us. The room we had in the jail was taken from the sheriff's apartment, its back windows facing the old cemetery. No sheriff had occupied the ancient building for many years, but it was an active it was an active service for over 200 years, having been erected in 1653. We want to check that date because I don't think that's currently um, believed to be accurate. But nonetheless, 1653, and is said to be the oldest public building in America. My first teacher was Anna Junkins, daughter of J. P. Junkins. In the old cemetery, there was a grave covered with a long, rough stone called the Witch's Grave. We supposed the stone was placed there to keep the unpleasant ghosts from coming out. Sometimes at recess or at noontime, we children would dance on the stone in fear and look down to the crevices through the sides. One noon we were waiting around. Um, I just want to, oh. some years later, when I was about 14, so this would have been in probably 1890s. Um, no, 1873, 72 or three. Okay, thank you. Um, I was about 14. Our house at the harbor was rented to summer visitors and for a couple of months, we lived in the same sheriff's apartment. I rather enjoyed the novelty and explored the old place with great interest. I recall the affection, the first three lady teachers who taught in the old jail, the said Anna Jenkins, Drusilla Perkins and Esther Mitchell, a resident of your corner. So not only did um, Ralph Lowe go to the old jail for school, but he actually moved in there with his family and was a resident of the old jail. And I don't think that was for any crimes committed. So I just wanted to bring that up. Um, and so now we're gonna, I'm gonna switch over to Elaine because I know she's got a lot to say. <laughs> well, my job as moderator is to try to save the images and pictures and photos that you people have been so generous to share with us. And I and the knowledge too. So what I'm doing is I'm downloading each image as much as I can, there's a lot of them, but I'm downloading them to a hard drive, which is um, an external hard drive. And then from there, they're being saved on the Google Drive so we've, and so in one way, we're saving them three places. We've got the external hard drive, we've got the Google Drive, and of course they're being saved on Facebook. So we've got three places they're being saved. If one of them should fail, hopefully the other two will be fine. So if say the external hard drive should fail, we've got them up in the cloud with the Google Drive and with the, with the um, Facebook. So we're hopefully, it's going to be able to save everything. 
the other thing I'm doing is I'm um, creating folders as I'm saving them, trying to sort them so that we can find what we want. Because if I just put them in Helter Skelter, we'll never know where we, it'll be so hard to find them. I'm trying to make um, a, uh, taking the file name and putting as much information as I can in the file name so that when you see it, or when we go back to look at it, we can say, okay, that file is such and such, and it's, and it's described within the file name. Sometimes there's a discussion that goes on that really is interesting and adds to the picture or the, the image. So I try to capture those. I either, well, for instance, um, write it up myself on a text document, or I'll even cut and paste the discussion into a text document. And then I try to save it with a name that is as close to the file name that I used for the original image. And that way they stay together and they will we'll be able to find them. So in other words, if I'm doing a school picture and a bunch of people come on and say, well, that's so-and-so and that's so-and-so, then I might write it up and say, you know, try to describe on the left side is, and then, um, so this way we can describe, we can add and, and link these images to the pictures, uh, to the to descriptions. Like for instance, uh, the rainbow room, when everybody was talking about that, there were some really interesting discussions. So I copy and pasted that into a text document saved it into a folder, oh, that's the other thing I was trying to talk about, into a folder called the Rainbow Room or the Rainbow Grill or whatever it's called, Rainbow Grill. And therefore we, they're all together. The other thing I'm doing is I'm making folders divided up between like place, families, uh, any kind of uh, description, uh, correspondence, cemeteries, Chase's Pond. So I'm doing places like Cape Medic. Some, and sometimes something will go into a, a folder that says like Cape Medic, and then it'll be like the Ware family. And there's enough other images that come along that I can create a folder, separate folder called the Ware family and move some of those into that. So what I'm trying to do is make it so it's easy to find things and um, we can save them and hopefully they'll be around for a long time. Um, any questions? Elaine, you want to go into a little bit about, um, you said what you would prefer people put, when they put in a picture, if they can give birth and death dates or, or whatever you want to, you want to go I, into I, a little bit about that. I love, I love um, saving things by dates. I'm a chronological person. So, when I, for instance, uh, if you know the date of your photograph, I'd love to see that. If you know the people in the photograph, that's fine. If you don't, that's okay too, because somebody else might. We don't know how many people are out there that have connections to your photograph. And they might come through with some really interesting information that you didn't even know existed. So if you can try to label it as, as correctly as you can, because I'm gonna to try to use that label in the file name, and that way we can locate it. My, like for instance, I have one folder that says school photos, and I'm trying to label each school photo by the first, the first thing I put on it is the date, like 1910 or 1911, 1936. And so they're chronologically in the folder by that date. And therefore you can, and it makes it so much easier. Somebody says, I got this picture of the class of something or rather, then you can maybe go to the um, graduation class of 1927, say, and you can say, oh, wait a minute, these same names are on this one. So this must be the class of 1927 when they were in second grade or whatever grade. So that we kind of link everything together this way so we can um, help each other describe and label the photographs. That's great. That's great. We're, uh, we're, 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 
our goal is to is to have a searchable database for generations to come. That's what our goal is. So, yeah, can Kevin, do you want to add about the uh, what we're doing with the uh, Peter Moore collection? Yeah, and I would also like to say that we did invite people to join us on this conversation on the Zoom conversation. Um, I see a couple of people who are watching. Um, hi, Gene. Hi, Ricky. Um, out there in Cyberland, you guys are tuned in, which is great. And if anybody would like to join in this conversation, um, we're glad to have you come on, um, as long as we're talking about history and specifically the group. Um, and going, going back to um, Elaine's point, we I think that it is our longer term goal to be able to post this, all of these things that Elaine's been saving um, for the public um, on a public server at some time once we figure out how to do that. So we're thinking that, you know, all of our members and anybody that has access to the internet will eventually go on and be able to type in a family name or something. And maybe you'll get a hit on this drive that Elaine's been working on. We're not quite sure how that's going to move forward, but um, we're going to definitely keep you apprised of that. Um, and so Kevin asked about Peter Moore's uh, collection of the unknown history of York, which he has so generously allowed us to digitize. And so I have been in the process of doing that and um, it is really enormous. And I'm just gonna share my screen here for a second because I have a picture of the contents of the box. Uh, can you guys see that? Yeah, yeah. So um, <laughs> this is, um, I, I guess I, I had no idea what we were getting into, um, but, but it's so fascinating. Um, so there's a catalog, Peter, Peter, thank you if you're watching. Um, thank you so much for your generosity. This is like a, a real treasure. At, at I thank you to the uh, Bardwell family as well. Yes. Yeah. Um, so there's an index here and um, we were, I was able to um, scan that the other day and make it searchable uh, uh, as a PDF and it's, it's all text. So I think there's like 60 pages of index and I think that each page might have about 20 or around 20 entry so there's a lot here and what peter did over the years was he just clipped out the uh, unknown history of york articles and he put them he made copies i guess he has other copies too um and he's put them into these binders and they're in order and they're really just amazing um i've i've scanned i think about um 60 so far and um and so I do post processing. I just try to clean them up in Photoshop and make them look kind of nice and as well and adjust the images as best that I can. And then um, I've been sending them to Kevin and Elaine and Elaine is putting them, she's saving them on the drive and Kevin is posting them um, and creating more conversation with them. And the thing that's so amazing about this collection that I find is, is that as I I open it up and I peruse through it and I want to, and you would think it would be as simple as taking photographs, but each article is so engaging and so compelling to read that I have to read each article. Thankfully, they're not really long, but if that's, that takes a, a process. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, this is just so, so great that Peter has saved all of these and they're intact like this and he's given us permission to um, use them. We do have a little issue with um, copyright. We don't, we haven't resolved it yet. So we're not going to get too far ahead of ourselves. Um, and you know, if any of you readers have any um, information about copyright, um, uh, we would be interested to uh, hear from you. Um, so I'm gonna go back to the regular screen here. Um, yeah, so that's that wraps it up as far as I know about Peter's stuff. Um, Kevin will be posting it as fast as he can once he gets it. And um, so that's that. Well, I... Uh... I'm going to try and put up two a week, uh, like on a Tuesday and a Friday. And one will probably be about a school or a local group or whatever. The other one might be about a building or, um, you know, something a tourist related, a beach picture or something like that. I'm trying, we're going to try and bury it up. Um, we like the comments, we like the survey. So, you know, keep, keep that stuff coming in. And um, um, I have a couple of big projects that I've got gonna post here on things that I'm looking for personally in life and in uh, on, on my history, on some history of York and, and uh, 
I won't get into that right now, but I, I will be putting up a picture soon that something that really interests me. But um, if anybody saw the post last night, I just bought this on eBay. And um, this is a, what they call a cabinet card. They're very prominent, oh, 1880 to 1920. And um, what drew me to this one was W.N. Goff of York Beach, of course. And, um, and then when I read into it, in the back, I, in a little pencil mark, it says Frederick Quimby. Well, we know Goff started his career in York Beach or in the 1890s. And we've probably identified that this is probably Fred Quimby that was born 1897. And um, we just had a member join here in the last day or so named Kathy Quimby from Wells. I don't know if she's related, uh, but stuff like this, I'd like to find the family. This is something they should have. Um, there's quite a story with this one because his father was uh, one of the early portrait artists. Um, he grew up on Western Point and his mother was a Donnell. And um, the family eventually moved up to the mountain area up in Kevin's area. Um, but his parents both died of TB before this kid was a year old. So then somebody in the family took the child and took it down to York Beach and had a cabinet photo made out of it. It's really a, kind of a moving story when you think about it. And I would love to unite that with the family. Um, again, we're loving all the input. We've had a big surge in membership. Um, we thank you all for joining. Um, that's This is what we're all about. We're trying to save it. We're trying to find out more about it, learn more about it. And don't think that whatever you have to offer is not important, it's all important. One little picture or photo and uh, Elaine is trying hard to save it. Um, and when you send something into us and if you can put as much info as possible on it, that helps. Um, uh, all of this helps if you again and with regard to genealogy stuff Kevin I know runs another Facebook group the York genealogy group um, we've had um, Kristen Lewis here she's a professional genealogist you can hire her um, but we're hoping that this York history group is a medium for everybody to use somehow donate your stuff and everybody move forward. And with this modern age of technology, which I'm not very good at, but some of Elaine and Kevin are great. Um, we can all move forward together on this thing. Kevin, anybody um, else? Yeah, Kevin, I'd, I'd like to say that I just looked and we have uh, this in the last month, we have another 420 new <laughs> members to your point. Um, the month before that, I think it was 246. So, whoa. So in the last, uh, so that's 640 members in the last two months or something like that. That's really significant. Um, you know, um, something that I think that could be appropriate to, to discuss is um, the genealogy aspect. Um, it's so inherently, you know, part of history. Um, and I would, I think that I, I kind of would like to post more um, genealogical stuff on um, York history group, but I feel like it would be kind of cluttering it up. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm just, I'm exploring this idea right now because I know we could do this privately later, but, um, but I'm just wondering what you feel about that. Um, and how much, you know, do we, do we stray off from somebody? Oh, so somebody also wrote a comment that, you know, um, let's keep this group just sort of the way it is and not try to go into colonialism, York's colonial heritage and, or history. Um, but the genealogic, 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 sorry, genealogical um, question is something that I'm kind of more curious about because it totally relates to local history. And so when we're talking about the Quimby um, family 
it's kind of interesting if somebody does post something that is like part of the family tree or something, I think, but it also does take up space. So I guess I'm looking for a response to that. I tried to answer a question for a member the other day and it regarded a molten. And so I dug into it just a little bit and I was like, whoa, there's 14 moltons in this one family alone. And I, and I said, Man, and the, and the same with the Youngs. And then, you know, Bobby Freeman put that picture up of his great, great grandfather as one had 14 children. And that's your line, I think, or something. But I mean, uh, we will try and brush on it and be as informative and hopefully as accurate as we can. Um, but as far as genealogy, if somebody a bigger question would be to take it, you know, we don't mind doing a little research here and there, but some of the stuff is, there's a lot to cipher through. Yeah, and it, it might not have the kind of interest that a photograph of the uh, York Village Elementary School might have, for example. We do notice a surge when we get, um, people love to see old buildings or, or uh, beach pictures or can remember something um, the old hotel, the Mitchell Hotel was, that's a great part of our history. Um, so anything like that really drags people out of the woodwork. They have a little story about it or met their husband at the rainbow or, you know, they, it's, that's all kind of fun. I had forgotten that Art Roberge's father built that place and Art was a year ahead of me in high school. So it's kind of fun to find there's still people involved in town that uh, remember this stuff or remember the buildings or were a part of the, the history of it somehow. So we like that. Uh, could I say something about the genealogy? Um, sometimes it's just, there's a photograph and somebody says that's so-and-so's father. And then you don't really know who so-and-so is. So the members will, bring up more information. And so it's not a real family tree and it's not researched history, but it is word of mouth from people who should know. So this makes it more interesting to the rest of us because I don't know the Ellis family's history. I didn't know the Ellis's and the Hancock's and the Wares were all connected and the Sewell's, but we do right. find these things out through other members telling us you know, that's my mother or that's, you know, and it, that, and I think it makes the connections which really are interesting to the rest of us. Yeah, and a good example is that Quimby photograph after we started a thread on that, we found out that Mary Ellis was, was married to, I think, Fred Jr. You know. Um, uh, who? Uh, Mary Ellis married to Fred J Jr. Quimby. Um, so it would be, I think it was the spouse. The guy that died in 79? Yeah. And so we're looking for his children or grandchildren is who we're looking for. It would be that guy, Charles Frederick Quimby, who is the son of Fred Butler Quimby. For, you said Fred Butler Quimby was your fourth great grandfather or his father was. Yeah, his father's father was uh, Ira, and then John uh, Fred Butler Quimby, uh, 1812, I think he was born. So there were two Fred Butler Quimbys. Um, that, there was just a generation between them, which, which made it complicated for me originally, but um, mm -hmm. now I got my head around. <laughs> well, some, somebody's out there somewhere is going to... No, this family is still alive somewhere, I think. Yeah, you know? and Kevin, I, I have found them on uh, Ancestry. And if you would like me to send you that info, I can send it. I did find the grandchildren. I found I posted the children's names and they were born in like 1826, 18, uh, 1926, 19... I saw 19, that, yeah. 1930, I think. And, and the, uh, two of them have kids that are like in their 50s right now. So um, you might be able to track them down. Well, this picture came all the way from Minnesota. So yeah. figure out how it got out there. You don't know, you know. Amazing. Yeah. 
but people gave out cabinet cards to their family. And that's how my family pictures ended up in Stu and Deb Pennington's house. And that was a hundred and something years, that almost a hundred years ago, you know? Yeah. So, you, you know, I think that the amazing thing about history is the more that you sort of um, acquaint yourself with it, the more that you want to know, it's just like, it's endless. You know, it's like, you just don't get enough. And so I think that it's addictive. And even just uh, my own family tree, it's like, holy smokes, I can just sit there for hours and just be, you know, just be more informed about um, my heritage. And that's amazing. And then when I go into your history group, I'm like, wow. So it's, just, it's all great. I also, I also think it's really great that we're identifying photographs. I have a wonderful photograph album that belonged to my grandmother, her family, and there are very few names in it. So I have unidentified photographs. So sometimes you can find somebody else who has that same photograph, which I did with some of my photographs. There was a guy in Connecticut who happened to come to the old York Historical Society to do some research on the Holman family. And it turned out he is some distant cousin of mine, but he had the same photographs. So he could say, well, that is so-and-so and that is so-and-so. So I got some of them identified. And that could happen on here too. You could put up a photograph. You could say, I don't know who this is, but this is my, this is, it belongs to this group. It belongs to this family. And then somebody else could come along and say, well, I'm a cousin of yours. You didn't know me, but I have that same photograph. So it could happen. Right. Yeah. And, and then um, I won't dis not disclose anything, Elaine, but Elaine recently informed me of some, um, Re a revelation about our family that just blew me totally away. I, I, I'm not any more closely related to Elaine, but I feel like I am. Um, by what she told <laughs> That's me. okay. You can't be. <laughs> I will say if people are interested that the old jail has good records on locals that were locked up and for what reason, because uh, when I was doing all my genealogy at the old uh, York Historical when they were downtown and I, I pulled those records and found a number of my Bridges ancestors that were in the who's gal for one thing drunk or disorderly or whatever so um, <laughs> the records are out there and it's uh, I'm not going to run from it or hide from it it's, it's that's history that's what it is and uh, we're having fun with it yes yep yeah, so anybody from the audience. I, just want, I, I just want to thank everybody for participating and um, contributing so much to the group because it's uh, it's just really creates a really rich environment a, a situation which I've really enjoyed. So thank you, everybody. Yes, thank and you. I want to thank everybody too. Elaine, go ahead. I was going to say thank you. I can't believe the generosity that is out there because you have shared so much and and so so well. I mean, I was just looking at the Anchorage, uh, the Sea Cottage photographs that Tom Prince put up and the descriptions he put with it. it excellent. And those were, I captured all those, put them in a text document, saved them, and I made a folder just for the Sea Cottage because it's the whole history of the Sea Cottage are right there. And their personal photographs that he had and made the whole story. So to be that, and even if you only have like one picture, of your grandmother or somebody like that. If you put that up and somebody else is gonna comment, I knew her, she did this. And there's stories out there. We all were, we would really enjoy. Right. Them. Tom is, Tom Prince is an authority on the Nubble. I mean, he was out there, I don't know. Did he live there, Prince Cottages? The family ran that for forever, since the fifties. And, uh, but he does know a lot. He's a big collector, uh, very knowledgeable. And now I'm interested more because um, Scott Young said that his father and Cad Trafton bought the Nubble Light dining room. His grandfather. And, grandfather, excuse me. And then I know Kathy Bridges' grandfather, Tom Bridges and, and Fanny were involved in the, were they involved in the, Foxes or the Nubble Light Down. They had a place they ran out. It was Coops for a while, and then who then it 
then it became bridges and then so i mean that's all i would like to know more of what is go what went on out there i remember frank coop then they had a little gift shop in their house i think mm -hmm. on the corner they lived on the bad corner there on the nubble um uh, so we're learning every week. I mean, we're learning every day. Somebody puts up something and we did that piece by Tom with all that background on the Mitchell house. That's, that's good stuff. And Lou D. Tommaso lives in that neighborhood and he can, he can fill us in. We are all here because we have a love of the town. Mm -hmm. um, it's <laughs> that's no other reason. It's a, a love of the town, love of the people. Um, I'll reiterate. We don't care if you've been here 400 years or four months. Um, it's all important to us. You're all welcome. Um, this is not an argumentative place. This is sort of a safe haven. And for just zealots that are into the history and whatever else we're doing. So thank you very much for my end. So Kevin? Yeah, I guess it's a wrap. Um, but I, I, the uh, picture of the Scott Young, um, Posted, I think it was uh, yesterday with the two little girls um, that mm -hmm. passed away from strep throat. Uh, that's a good example of something that really, you know, it 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 caught me off guard. It was it's so precious. The the photo is it's such a tragic story, um, and you know, and as you're scrolling through, you come across something like that, and you're just really touched by it. And you know, those faces still exist in in our history um, in perpetuity, hopefully, and. Um, it's just like, I didn't expect to have like, you know, it's, it's, a, it's just, a, it's a, as sad as it is, it's also a beautiful moment just to see those two you know, people. But Jimmy Ellis, that picture that uh, Peter Ellis put up of Jimmy Ellis that died 1921. Yeah, exactly. I trying to figure it out. Yeah. Big, handsome kid, you know, and uh, um, yeah. whether he died of tuberculosis or what, but I never knew that story. And it's a, very sad to see how much people put into the town or put them and their life is cut short. And, and, um, but it's nice. The stories are nice. It's all, it's all good. Thank you very much. And, and, that, and go ahead. Elaine. It also gives those people who have kind of been hidden, it gives them a chance to come back up so we can see them and we can remember them and other people can remember them. And this is good. Yeah. Yes, it is. It's very good, good stuff. And, and I'm just, before Kevin says goodbye to everybody, um, I just want to say that we still would like to interview people. I have asked a couple of people to come on um, to be interviewed and some people are camera shy. So, um, um, but if you have anybody that you can think of, if you're, you yourself would like to come on and be interviewed, please just reach out to one of us and we'll set things up. We'd love to hear from you. And we can do it by Zoom. And pretty soon, hopefully, maybe within a couple of months, we could actually go to locations and do more of a, like a documentary segment. So please keep that in mind. Yeah, and I'll, I'll also reiterate, people have sent me some important pictures of people that are important in their, their life, but our life as well. And I am going to do a little blip, but I'm sometimes looking for more backstory or how I'm going to put it all together or... Um, you know, I, there's, there's a great, going to be some info coming out on, on, on the golf course and Willie Wilson. Uh, I mean, he's a big part of our town, man that came here from Scotland. And, uh, you know, I haven't forgotten any of this stuff and I've got it, but I just got to work it all in and with everything else we're going. And then we get this bone that the Peter Ellis Bardwell collection. It's like, whoa. <laughs> I mean, that could have a Facebook page of its own, you know, a life of its own. Yeah. So, yeah. again, we haven't forgotten anybody. We try and we're going to try and get back to all this stuff. And I'm forever thankful to Kevin and Elaine for helping me through this whole project. And thank you too, Kevin. Yes, thank you. Thank, you, thank you, Elaine. All right. We're done? We're done. Done. Bye, everybody. Bye.